corrections or changes? If not, is there a motion to approve those minutes as submitted? I'll make that motion. Is there a second? I'll second. All right, roll call. Mr. Boyd? Aye. Mr. Owens? Aye. Mrs. White? Aye. And Mr. Giesler? Aye. All right, the August 9, 2022 special call meeting. Are there any corrections to those minutes? If not, is there a motion to approve those as submitted? So move. I'll second. Did you find something? Okay. Um, roll call. Mr. Boyd. Aye. Mr. Owens. Mrs. White Aye. and Mr. Giesler. Aye. All right. Uh, the first uh, item is a certificate of appropriateness for um, Mr. Bassett. For staff report? Yeah. So um, the applicant uh, asked us yesterday to if he could have a different time in which he could come in and meet with you all. Um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about what action we were planning on taking with his case. Um, we have five violations on his property um, that are outstanding at this time. And so when it comes to enforcement, um, you know, the key, the section that we're using is 8-11 um, that says basically when we've gone through the process of trying to get somebody to come into compliance with what they've been approved with, we can then have them come in front of the board and have them, um, it says the board shall first request a meeting with the property's owner or authorized representative um, and endeavor to discuss with such persons ways to improve the condition of the building or structure in accord accordance with a mutually agreeable time schedule. Um, if such procedure leads to correction of the violation to the board's satisfaction, no further action shall be taken. So our request to him was to come in, um, talk about his violations. Um, this was the meeting that he'd agreed to and for us to figure out whether or not we would amend his approvals to include his things that he has done differently from his original approvals or if we were going to go through a corrective action process. Um, since he did not attend tonight, we did send him a letter um, saying that we would discuss it tonight and see which direction um, you all wanted to go. Um, so I did also ask our uh, building official Rick to attend the meeting this evening um, to talk a little bit about um, the building permitting side of it on our um, on the COA side essentially we have had um, approvals over the last year I think since about 2021 um, a variety of things and um, none of them have been done um, in accordance to what you all approved um, and so Basically, we're now at a point where we need to either send this on and just process it as a complete violation, or if you all are willing to either have a special meeting or have him come to the next meeting, um, we're also open to that. So I don't know if you'd like to hear about any of the violations from either Rick Statzer or myself, or if you would like to just discuss what the next actions should be. Did, did he indicate that he's not coming to our, to a meeting or did he just say he couldn't make this meeting and want us to reschedule he would like to reschedule um so that would be his choice he would like to reschedule so he was unable to come tonight he came <laughs> yesterday and told us that he could no longer come tonight okay. well um i think it's pretty serious to have five violations and i think we probably should meet with him but I also think it would, I think it would be helpful if we could hear from Rick Statzer, if we're to go there yet, from Rick Statzer just to have a preliminary talk about, about them. I know we, I know we reviewed them extensively with him. Hello. <laughs> uh, Rick Statzer, Bill Official, down by Evan, just for a formal part of it. So last fall, we issued a permit to... Uh, Can you speak up just a little bit there? Sorry. Sorry. So last fall, we issued a permit to Mr. Bissett for the renovation and addition of his restaurant at 134 Wall Street. So over the course of the next 
three or four months, we went through that process of you know doing the inspections and working toward a final inspection, final approvals. So we got down to the final inspections, and there were a couple items remaining. So with that, we issued a temporary certificate of occupancy to allow him to occupy. He wanted. He was really anxious to get open and occupy the structure. So our Virginia Construction Code allows us to issue a temporary to give them time to do that, provided there's no unsafe conditions. That's, that's what you're always guarding against. So we presented him with that temporary certificate of occupancy and uh, allowed him to open and, you know, with the understanding that at some point, you know, those would be corrected and we'd finish up and, you know, issue the final completion certificate. Part of that final included the pergola stru structure out back, which he was not complete with. He was kind of moving it from one side of his building to the other. So in doing so, he didn't get it completed in the time that he wanted to open. So it, I included that as part of the final and that we follow up on it in that 90-day time frame that we allowed him for the temporary certificate of occupancy. So uh, at this point, uh, and that was when we issued the temporary certificate of occupancy, that was January. And we still haven't closed those items and we still haven't finished up on the items that were addressed during the inspection of the park line. So at this point, that's where we are with that project is, you know, it's, we have open, we have open violations. And those are matters other than the violations of our certificate of appropriateness, yes. right? Yes, these are matters related to or as part of the building permit and part of the Virginia Construction Code requirements, the violations of that code, the building code. So uh, beyond that, uh, we have another part of the pergola construction includes the discharge of water. It has a roof on it, so the water drains off the roof onto our sidewalk. That's a problem in terms of the town code. The town code addresses that and you can't, you know, the discharge from the roof can't just be on our sidewalk. It has to go to a gutter. It has to go to a gutter system and a downspout and eventually to the street gutter. So that part has, you know, that part has not been addressed either. And then the, and then the building, the building, the storage building at the rear of the structure. So the building code, based on the size of that structure, exempts that building. It, it, it doesn't require that that building have a building permit, issue, building permit issued. So that part, you know, wasn't, building permitting wasn't involved, but he did install electrical on that. So there is another violation there and he, to obtain a permit to install electrical into that building. So. That's pretty much uh, the course as it's been since last fall and started the renovation project, or renovation slash addition, which is what it was. And I'm happy to answer any questions you guys have about that project or any of the pieces in between. So those three violations, basic, viola not basic, but the three violations that you kind of summarized there, are over and above the five? Correct. Yeah. So we're actually talking about eight violations. Okay. Yeah. Correct. Yes. yes. But so what, one, of our, one of our violations is that we approved him building a storage building, but Correct. instead he put a prefab building on, and but then he put electricity in it, which was a, so it's a similar. They're problem. very interconnected. Yes. Yeah. Well, it seems like maybe the thing we should do is have a special meeting to have him come in, because it's going to be lengthy. Okay. And maybe we could have Rick here for that. Yeah, because there's this is two parts, his part and our right. part. So instead of yeah. having two different meetings, I think it would be wise to do it all at once. Yeah, and I'm happy to help with that part. You know, there's a, there's another part and part of the code that I follow beyond this, which in, includes you know a notice, sending an official notice of violation, and you know follow that process to where it leads. Has has. Have you issued a notice of violation on your part yet? I have not. Okay, just yeah. we have on our part. Okay. Correct. I have not. So, so under your under your process, once you is, issue your notice of violation, what kind of time limitations come into play? So, 
our code, the building code directs you to establish a reasonable time frame to make those corrections. The ones that are outstanding, the ones that have not been corrected with any of your other inspections. So that that's it's just a reasonable time frame and it's for me and him to decide, you know. So. Well should we delay I mean, it seems like it might be more efficient to have you do that and then if he doesn't comply for us all to have a meeting to address all these things at one time. I mean I I don't know. It's I'm sort of working through this. It's yeah, it's 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 a bit complicated. Uh part parts of what I have relates to uh, like the roof or the, the pergola roof. He's indicated that he is not inclined to put the gutter on or the downspout and essentially you have to create a channel under our sidewalk, under our town sidewalk to get that discharge out to the street gutter. He's indicated that he's n not interested in doing that which will involve removing that the roof that's on there now, or at least the roof covering. So and, we, we and, and that it. changes the scope of some of my violations. I see. Yeah, we approved the guttering, but it's not gone up. No, it's not gone up. No. So that's where it's kind of like it's a very interconnected. You know, if he said, "Okay, I'll take down the pergola," then now Rick's violations would go away because there is no pergola mm -hmm. with a roof that needs guttering. <laughs> so that's kind of why I asked Rick to come in and us to all talk together. Well, well, maybe what we could do is have a special called meeting and have him come in to address our violations okay. and you could be there to advise him and uh, to talk to him also about his problems and then we yeah. could set a reasonable time okay. to, um, to get these things corrected before we escalate the situation on our end. Should he go ahead and move with his violations? If he want, uh, yeah, I think I you think should. I think that would be wise. Yes. So that way he would have all the information that he needs okay. of his violations. Okay. Yeah. We could even do our a special call meeting in three weeks. Okay. Something like that instead of the middle of September. Okay. Very well. Does that sound mm -hmm. agreeable? I won't be participating. Oh, that's right. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, I can do it in three weeks. I can't do it in two weeks. Yeah, three weeks would be good. Okay, then we will um, we will follow up with him. Rick will issue a notice of violation from the building department, and then we'll try to meet back here on the 28th of September, if that's a, agreeable to him. Um, right. Okay. That's only a, a week before the October meeting. Correct. Yeah. Regular meeting. Do you want to come? Pardon? You don't have to go. I'll be away. Oh, <laughs> that's right. Okay. All right. That's fine. Anything further on this? No. Thank, All right. you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Rick. Okay. Um, certificate of appropriateness, uh, Town of Abingdon, um, signage at 300 Green Springs Road. Uh, staff report. idea what page this starts on <laughs> seven oh that was 37 <laughs> well, well seven is the conclusion Three okay. Okay. just uh, wanted to bring the image up here Let's see we just had a lot of a lot of items here Are we at the request for the appropriateness for the sign and decorative bicycle? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Tanya Triplett is here tonight as the representative um, for the certificate of appropriateness for signage and a decorative bicycle. Um, the property is located at 300 Green Spring Road and the proposed signage will be similar to both design and material used at the Abingdon Welcome Center. 
Um, the other piece to this, which I'll let Tanya get a little more detailed into it, is that she has also had a lot of people come into the uh, visitor center and ask, um, where's the creeper trail? Which for those of us who are local might think, you know, well, it's it's right there and it's got a big sign. But um, the way that the uh, the way that the outside patio area with the bricks um, have they sort of go also around the side of the building. So people sometimes cross over from the parking lot and they think, oh, I'm supposed to go to the left to go around the building. So in addition to a Virginia Creeper Trail Welcome Center sign, um, she's also proposing a painted historic bicycle to be placed um, along the pathway and that would hopefully guide people a little more in the correct um, direction. So I have nothing else to add. I'm sure she might like to say some more things. She's here tonight. Um, but these are basically the two things that um, the town of Abingdon is asking for, a welcome center sign and to be allowed to put a decorative bicycle out there. And I really don't have anything else to add unless you have questions. What's the color for the bicycle? Uh, I'd like to stick with that yellow or gold color. Exactly where is it located? There's a dogwood tree right at the, at the entrance. So when you come around the brick sidewalk, it kind of curves around in front of the train. And at that point, you can kind of see the trestle, but there's a little dogwood tree with the flower bed that kind of sits over. Uh, if you're on the sidewalk it's, it's sidewalk, it's on the right hand side of the road and it joins the Levine property. But there's room underneath that dogwood tree, tree and inside of that flower bed to sit it. And we could, it would be a little bit more visible from the road. So is there like an arrow or something to say trail that way? Or do We don't have anything. We, we were fortunate enough to get Kevin Sigmund a few weeks ago to agree to trim some of the uh, underbrush from some of the dogwood trees, the smaller limbs that had grown down to make the new archway a little more visible. And we're going to lose a few more limbs out of... Oh, I see where you're talking. So this those, dogwood here? That one? Yeah, uh, no, on the other side, right there, Here. on the on the right. Oh, oh right. right. Yeah, right gotcha. in there. Oh, okay. Well, there be, and there won't be a sign on the bicycle. It'll just be the bicycle. It'll just be the bike. Okay. Yeah, the sign we would like to put in front of the Creeper Trail Welcome Center. People use that sign. The sign that was there prior, people used it for selfies. So um, we we really wanted to get the Abingdon logo. Um, put on the new signage so that when selfies are taken that would be prominent. Wouldn't it be better just to put a creeper terrell entrance sign in the same location with maybe an arrow? Uh, I mean, on the bike or? No, just as a sign. I mean my, my concern is if someone wants to put an antique bed in front of their bed and breakfast in the front lawn, you know, we might be opposed to that. Okay. You see what I mean? If the, I mean, in one place where this is for this kind of thing, it's a pretty good idea, but we're always worried about setting precedents for other type things. Okay. So, I mean, I don't know. Am I the only one that – maybe I'm the only one. <laughs> I, I, there's a lot of signage there. Right. There's the Black Fort sign. There's a signage about the trail now on the new trestle and about Dr. Moore's uh, history with with the signs. So there's lots of signage there. So I felt like just if we had an older bike that would be kind of a decorative um, ad addition as well that would be very visible from the road that that would be a, a sign without well, being obvious, a sign. Obvious marker <laughs> that this is the bike trail. Yes. Well, it's not attached to anything. I mean, it's, it's not altering anything. It's not a permanent like, structure at yeah. all. It could be, could, I mean, we may have to tack it down so someone <laughs> wouldn't take it, but it would definitely not be anything. We wouldn't concrete it in or anything like that. I mean, is it going to have the baskets with the flowers in it? Uh, I'm, I don't know. I haven't purchased the bike yet. I was waiting to see if you guys would approve it, and then I'll try to get something as close to that with the wide wide seat or the older. Uh, we, we thought that we were going to have a, a donation of a bicycle built for two by someone in Abingdon, uh, but we think that leaving it outside would probably ruin it, and we may want to have that inside as a historical piece at some point. I dreamed it. Or did I actually see a painted bike somewhere? There's a painted in bike Bristol? in front of the Johnson Center here in Abingdon. It white. It is. Oh, I have seen that one. Yeah. yeah. It's very cute. What about a, a, a decorative arrow? 
somehow integrated out into the bike on the bike. Uh, I'm happy to do a metal sign that says the Virginia Creeper Trail and an arrow pointing that way. I don't think you need that. I, I mean, if people need that, just need okay. that much help, just they shouldn't arrow? be riding a bike. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I said that when they kept asking, "Where's the trail?" I was like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> my, my concern is, is if they if these individuals that can't find the trail and they're right at the trail I don't think that's going to help them. you think it won't <laughs> you know, it might right, not <laughs> you would think it would but if they're that oblivious to start off with I don't know that you know, that's just my thought I think the archway is going to be extremely helpful and I think when we get some of the tree limbs trimmed at the archway we like I said we've taken some of the under limbs in the dogwood trees along the path out and that's helped a little bit with the visibility but I believe it's a walnut tree that has some limbs that's kind of coming over I think if we could get those trimmed and it's also blocking on the back side of that archway uh, on the back it says happy trails and you can't see the trails part so uh, I'm hopeful that that our guys will be able to get that that the tree uh, right about where the guy in the red shorts there's a tree right over there that the limb you can kind of see it coming over the trail so we get those two the, the archway now is going to be more visible well I have this comment I mean it is it is unusual and different but it is this is um, a public place that we're trying to direct public visitors to a lot of public visitors and if they're having a hard time seeing where the trail is, this is more demonstrative than a, just a plain sign would be. And it's not permanent there, so if it, if it ends up not looking right, it can be removed, right? Right. Um, and I do think that the addition of just an arrow on it might really make it look like this is a sign. It's not like somebody just put up a, just propped their old bike over here. Okay. Their cute old bike. <laughs> <laughs> What's the archway? Have we seen that, or is it? It was added a couple of months ago. To the entrance, the new entrance archway. Mm -hmm. you're about. Yes. yes. Is it there now? Yeah. Yes. Oh. I just don't. Google Maps hasn't been updated. So, so Dr. Moore's family um, gave some money, and we used the uh, railroad ties from the trestle that was destroyed during the tornado. And we have a local artist. His name is Hunter Danhart who put some metal, um, some metal font that says the Virginia Creeper Trail across the top. Mm -hmm. So this archway goes across the trestle and then comes down on both sides and then on, on uh, both sides there's a little bit of information about the trail and some history. Well, we drive down there once a day. Oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. You need to go see it. I don't walk there. <laughs> <laughs> you got to make a trip. You need a staycation. <laughs> I'm personally not opposed to the bike, you know, and I think a little sign that says creep the trailhead or something would be important. Or just an Mile arrow. zero, that's some of the things we're doing in, in uh, tourism to really promote that the trailhead is here, that we're the, the trail mm -hmm. starts here. Yeah, mile zero. That's and mile zero, so that's, an arrow. yeah. But I'm still suspicious that it'll have a big improvement as far as people finding it. <laughs> the ones that can't find it. And then we just kind of stayed the, stayed with the same design that we have at the visitor center, the uh, replacing the bike and the hiker on top instead of the wolf. And the sign is uh, the right specification size wise. It's a 16 by 36, which is what's uh, the two signs, the same size as the two signs that we have now. Right. All right. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve the um, application as presented with the one amendment of um, some little small signage that says an arrow and mile zero. Is there a second? I'll second. All right, uh, roll call. Mr. Boyd. Aye. Mr. Owens. Aye. Mrs. White. Aye. And Mr. Giesler. Aye. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank I appreciate you. it. Thank you. All right. Um, Next, we have uh, Jeff Johnson um, for Certificate of Appropriateness at 102 East Main Street. We have a staff report. Kibro Christofari, Town of Abington, Town Planner. So yes, uh, the applicant, Jeff Johnson, has requested approval of a Certificate of Appropriateness for exterior changes. Uh, the property is located at 102 East Main Street. And the proposed exterior changes include sealing all gaps slash holes slash entryways between the fascia and the brick, 
uh, repair slash cover decayed roof joists that are cantilevered to eliminate entry points and to repair slash seal gable vents to prevent entry of pests, spe specifically squirrels, bats, birds, etc. And the property is in the Old Anastoria District and the entrance corridor overlay. For uh, some background, according to Places and Time, Volume 1, ran by Nancy C. King, the structure was built in 1871 as known as the John W. Barr House. John W. Barr bought Lot 8, where 102 East Main Street sits today, and Lots 5 and 7 from Michael Shaver, Shaver's heirs. Michael Shaver was a blacksmith, and Edmonton's only silversmith previously owned Lots 5, 7, and 8. All structures built by Michael Shaver on these lots burned down in 1856. Access to the site continues to be East Main Street and South Church Street, and the adjacent properties are all OH. So staff findings, the applicant is proposing to seal all these gaps and holes between the fascia and the brick and repair slash recover uh, uh, all decayed roof joists that are cantilevered to eliminate entry points and repair slash seal gable vents to eliminate any intrusion of any pests coming into the structure. Uh, all the work will be essentially not seen from public view though because it will be under the fascia. And uh, this work could be classified as maintenance uh, the reason for the application, though, is the applicant will be requesting a uh, town tax credits and request the HPRB, and that requests the HPRB review and approval of this project for the tax credits. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Johnson, do you have anything you'd like to add to that? Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. My name is Jeff Johnson. I live at 102 East Main Street. Um, as staff has indicated, the reason for a lot of these items are maintenance items, but um, in order to qualify for the tax credit um, is the reason for coming before the board and requesting the COA. A lot of, a lot of these items you're not going to notice. We're going to be sealing um, in between the fascia and the brick itself, up behind actually the fascia. We'll be caulking that. Um, some of the gable vents and there are some other areas in which we may end up having to do just a little bit of brick repair and or mortar repair to seal the gaps. Um, and again, this is for pest control. Rogers Wildlife is the company that's going to be doing it. Um, they've done the Goodmans, they've done um, the old Mallory residence, uh, the Methodist Church Parsonage. They've run the bats out of everywhere until they <laughs> came to my house <laughs> so uh, that's and yeah, they're not in victim too. yeah they're not in the structure yet but uh, we do have uh, some signs on the back side of a couple of the shutters um, any painting um, that will be done um, you know we're going to be using Sherman Williams 7005 which is a white that uh, was previously approved for a, a prior COA we had the mortar is uh, a lime-based mortar. It's from Lime Works. Um, the color is, actually I've got a sample here, is 150 um, that we've used for uh, prior COAs on Rick Point repointing. Um, again, the majority of this is just, it's maintenance items, um, but due to the cost, if there's a way that I can recoup some of it on down the line, then obviously want to want to take a look at it all right does anyone have any questions i have a comment um, yes ma'am that uh, thank you for doing this and you, you certainly have one of our primary contributing structures and it's commendable that you're taking care of it so well i know we just had to banish a squirrel he chewed through the first um repair so oh. there's pesky little they thing. do tangos <laughs> at night <laughs> Um, right. above the closet area but it's first of all thank you um, we really enjoy the house sometimes you feel like you're chasing your tail at times um, between all the improvements but uh, we we really enjoy the house yes well, it's one of our primary houses in Abingdon as we all love thank, thank you very much all right is there a motion I move we approve the certificate as presented okay is there a second a second all right roll call Mr. Boyd? Aye. Mr. Owens? Aye. Mrs. White? Aye. And Mr. Giesler? Aye. Thank you all Thank very you. much. Thank you. Okay, next is a certificate of appropriateness for Brad Kinder. Um, 
uh, from Cedar Bluff for 112 East Main Street. We have a staff report. Sure. This one might seem familiar to you all. Um, Bradley Kinder um, has been here in front of the board before. He's requesting a certificate of appro appropriateness for a sign. Property is located at 112 East Main Street. Um, the sign now is going to measure 32 inches by 16 inches. Um, and it's going to be double sided and it's proposed to read Healing Waters Counseling Center. Um, the property is in the OH district. That's why you all are hearing and seeing it tonight. Um, there's currently no sign where the proposed sign is to be located. Um, and so now they are um, coming in with a sign that meets the current standards of four square feet. Um, there is proposed in the future that there may be um, some lighting. I think we discussed that a little bit last time. Um, there is an outlet there. Um, I'll just read for the record. Lighting should be concealed and should not use visible bulbs, flashing lights, or luminous paints. Spot or uplit lighting for signs is recommended, but they should not be backlit or internally lit. Um, so with that, um, the applicant or his representative is here tonight, and um, you can ask any additional questions that you might have. Hello. Yeah, I'm Jeff Easterling, sending in for Brad Kinder. Uh, he's not able to be here tonight, so any questions y'all have for me? Uh, does anyone have any questions? I no think questions. our sign falls within, I think it was 46 point some inches, so it was within the four square feet. I, and go ahead, I'm sorry. I just want to make sure that the colors are what this is. The it's colors. exactly like that right there. Perfect. Do the T. Yeah. And, and the materials, would you just state what the material of the sign is? Uh, as far as I know, it's a it's a wood based material, and the poster wood. Okay. Okay. Good for me. Good for me. Okay. Um, is there a motion? I'll make that motion. To approve. To approve. <laughs> is there a second? I'll second. All right. Roll call. Mr. Boyd. Aye. Mr. Owens. Aye. Mrs. White. Aye. And Mr. Giesler. Aye. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You very I appreciate much. it. Thank you. All right, next is uh, Nathan Berg um, with regard to 190 East Main Street um, for a certificate appropriate for some signage. So, uh, staff report. Okay, um, so Nathan Berg of Wahlberg Construction is requesting approval of a certificate of appropriateness for signage. This is the property located at 102 Court Street, um, which we all had the pleasure of visiting um, a couple weeks ago on our. Uh, at our event. Um, the proposed signage is a cast bronze plaque on the building. Um, there is also a request for projecting signage and there, the tenant identification signage with which uh, Mr. Berg's here tonight so he can explain it to you but they do have a entranceway into their building where they're proposing to put signs inside the building for future tenant um, representation. So the signage is um, quite small um, again, as the last one, there's currently no sign where the proposed sign is to be located. Um, the parcel is in the old and historic district. Um, the proposed sign will measure about one square foot, which is obviously allowed. Um, resident, uh, restaurants are actually allowed much larger square footage for the signage um, if desired, but the applicants indicated that their primary purpose is to really identify that lower level um, restaurant space. And, um, and so that was the request. Um, there is also a projecting sign. Um, this will be attached to the building on Main Street, on the Main Street side of the building. And um, that sign is to allow pedestrians to vis visually, visually identify that location of where the building is. So um, it is, uh, the signs proposed to be of Duranic and Alcoa, which is the trade name for an electrochemical treatment to aluminum that results in the development of color while protecting against oxidation. So if you want to hear more specifics about that, um, Mr. Berg is here and can discuss it with you. Welcome. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hello. Berg, uh, 24383 Walden Road. So yeah. Uh, these are the two signs for the summer's roof and cellar. Um, any questions? Does anyone have any questions? They mm -hmm. look fantastic. They, they Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, they certainly are a good size. Yeah. And, and a good design, too. 
I like the color. What was the comment about interior? Oh, yes. So, as you're aware, there's a, an, an entrance lobby, and so the building directory will be located in the lobby, um, and it will be just to the left of the elevator. Mm -hmm. So, um, there will probably be, we're, there may, we're still figuring out what we want to do exactly. There will definitely be a building directory just to the left of the elevator doors, indicating you know, which floors uh, the different tenants are occupying. And then we may or may not um, also have an, an additional directory that would be on the Court Street facing side of the elevator shaft. Uh, it would be something that you could see from, if you look through the glass, you could see another building directory. We may not need that, but um, so but those inside. are the, it will be it's inside. inside. It's, those are both inside. Well, it matters whether it's visible or not. If it's inside, it's not really. Yeah, we don't, no. we don't control that. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's so. That, but that's how the the building director would, would be handled. And then uh, the restaurant sign, as you can see, that's in the on that front foremost column, um, is where the projecting summer's roof and cellar sign would be. That is a. Um, it's an aluminum. Uh, clad sign with a um, polymer core and the aluminum is coated I don't know the scientific names for it but it's coated in a material that basically makes it you know impermeable you, it'll be there forever mm -hmm. so um, just you know one did something that kind of fits with the uh, kind of the art deco um, theme of the building so we have two signs is what we have. That's right. One is a brass plaque and the other is the projecting um, aluminum sign. That's the brass plaque um, that you're looking at right there on the screen. I don't know if you can see. Yep. All right. Is there a motion to yeah. approve? Just one quick question. Yeah. How high is the, is the projecting sign mounted? I mean, what would the bottom? The bottom of the sign would be seven. Uh, it would be no more than six foot eight, which is what a doorway is, but probably the bottom would be <coughs> at around seven feet. That way even the tallest person wouldn't knock their head on it. Are there any other questions? Is there a motion uh, with regard to the certificate? I'll make that motion to approve. Is there a second? I'll second. Sorry, I was waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, roll call. Mr. Boyd. Aye. Mr. Owens. Aye. Mrs. White. Aye. And Mr. Giesler. Aye. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I'll, I'm coming right back up. Okay. <laughs> All right, next is back to it. Uh, Nathan Berg with a certificate of appropriateness for um, a more signage. Um, so staff report. Sure. Um, Nathan Berg of Walberg Construction is requesting a certificate of appropriateness for a sign to be located at 174 East Main Street. Um, the proposed sign is a cast bronze plaque. Um, you are hearing this because it is a property located in the OH district. Um, there's currently no sign located at this location. Um, the proposed sign is to be 18 inches by 18 inches, so that's three square feet. So that falls below the four square feet that um, the code requires. Again, it's of a similar material as he just indicated with his uh, previous application. So with that, I have nothing else. All right, not much else to add here. Uh, Except that we, Wahlberg is moving their, our offices to the former Treasury building. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, so that, that uh, will be our new home. And um, that sign is located where the old Washington County Treasury uh, signs were. Um, there's actually existing holes in oh. the masonry that we'll reuse. That's why I was... Uh, well, the sign's fantastic. I just thought it was a little high, but I see why you're. Yeah, uh, we. Um, that we didn't want to put make more holes. Right. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. actually, this rendering, um, I just noticed, <laughs> this rendering is incorrect. It it will actually be brought down one uh, 
section of stone. Oh, so you can be, be you can faintly see, oh, the, you outline. Can see the outline. You can yeah. see yeah. Oh yeah. So it will go right there. Yeah, I'm sorry. Fine. That, and yeah. Okay. I, I didn't catch that earlier, but it will be a little bit lower. Okay. There you go. Wish granted. <laughs> <laughs> Should buy a lottery ticket. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Any questions? Um, is there a motion to uh, to approve? I'll make a motion to approve the application for the sign as presented. Is there a second? I'll second. Roll call. Mr. Boyd. Aye. Mr. Owens. Aye. Mrs. White. Aye. And Mr. Geisler. Aye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, we're looking at Nathan's projects. I, I think the vent pipe is looking fine. Even though it's not finished. Yeah, it's coming along. But I think There's it's one section that we will paint still, but uh, yeah. And while you're here, thank you so much for uh, your participation in our seminar and for having us uh, tour the rooftop at the end. That was fantastic. It was, it was we our pleasure. Really appreciate it. All right. Um, next is a certificate of appropriateness for Grace and Henry McCarthy and uh, staff report. Gabriel Christopher, Town of Evidence. So this is kind of a multifaceted project. So once again, I just broke it down into sections. So if you have any questions for any one of those, feel free to jump in and ask. So yes, Grace and Henry McCarthy have requested approval of certificate appropriateness for exterior changes and landscape features. The property is located at 315 East Valley Street. And the proposed exterior changes and landscape features include replacement of existing corrugated metal roof painted dark green with a metal standing seam roof with striations slash ribs painted dark green, replacement of existing metal painted white half round gutters and round downspouts with K-style gutters and rectangular downspouts a concrete walkway and a new retaining wall constru constructed of gray stone pavers. Uh, so some background. Um, according to Places and Time, Volume 1, ran by Nancy C. King, the building was built in the early to mid-1800s, roughly, uh, and is known as the Jacob Clark House. Uh, William Jones built an, ad built an addition onto the western part of the structure in 1840. However, the land card states that the structure dates back to 1900, so we're looking at mid-1800s to maybe late 1800s we're looking at. Access to the site would be East Valley Street still, and all the properties adjoining it are OH. So for the first part of it, uh, we're gonna look at the gutters. So the applicant is proposing to install K-style gutters with retainer downspouts. Currently, the structure has metal half-round gutters and round downspouts painted white. Uh, much of the current guttering was installed by the previous owner and was done improperly, causing water damage to other exterior components of the structure, mainly a lot of the wooden components. Uh, several sections of the guttering are missing, and the downspouts are either not properly attached to the structure or sections of the downspout are missing. In a few sections of the guttering, a makeshift hole was cut in the attached was cut to attach what appears to be modern decorative rainwater catching devices. And you can see that in your packet here. So I'm not sure when those were put in, but they're obviously more modern. Uh, the applicant found a K-style downspout in the ground on the east side of the structure at the, inter at the intersection where the building becomes a T. Uh, upon, but upon investigation during a site visit, staff found the downspout in the ground to be plastic. And it's not original or historic. It's a modern plastic cutout in the ground. Uh, given the approximate age of construction being late 1820s to 1900, it is highly likely this structure originally had half round gutters and round downspouts. Uh, the following design guidelines explain the appropriate type of gutters and their installation. So uh, B, when installed, gutters and downspouts should, be, should not result in the removal of existing eave features and should be located away from significant architectural features of the associated building. Gutter straps should be nailed under, under and not on top of the roofing material. B, uh, uh, D is metal gutters and downspouts other than copper and prefinished metal should be maintained by painting all surfaces including the inside of the gutters. And E, hang on type gutters and downspouts should be painted metal or copper. Gutters should be half round rather than K or OG unless evidence indicates that K or OG is appropriate to the period where I've stayed given the age of this structure. K or OG are probably not appropriate. 
If there's no questions for that one, I'll move on. Um, next, we're going to move to the retaining wall. Uh, so the applicant is proposing to construct a new retaining wall of gray stone pavers, three blocks high. Each block measures 11.63 inches long, 6.75 inches wide, and four inches high. Uh, the proposed gray stone paver retaining wall will be three blocks high according to the dimensions provided and stand one foot tall. The proposed stone paver retaining wall will be located at the back of the property, uh, close to the back door found on the western uh, side of the structure, and I've outlined where the retaining wall would go approximately. And then the following design guidelines explain the appropriate types of new construction uh, for retaining, gutter, uh, retaining walls. A, retaining walls of new construction should be of smooth concrete or in stone design such as cut stone, random rubble, coarse rubble or cobblestones. Retaining walls of brick are less appropriate but may be, in some instances, may be constructed. Um, B, retaining walls of timbers or railroad ties are not permitted. Retaining walls of artificial stone should not be constructed at the front of buildings. Retaining walls not exceeding three feet in height may be constructed of artificial stone in the rear of the buildings. And then, so there is a existing retaining wall. It's located at the front of the property, fronting East Valley Street. And it appears to be a poured concrete blocks made to appear as stone fronting East Valley Street. The existing poured concrete block is as high as the existing concrete stairs found directly off of East Valley Street. The existing retaining wall does not continue towards the back of the property, though. It just ends right at the top of the stairs, as you can see in the picture I provided here. Oh, we're on to the roof. Uh, the applicant is proposing to replace the existing corrugated metal roof with a type of metal standing seam roof with striation slash ribs, pre-finished in hunter green, and so the color pretty much matches what's already there. Um, staff could not find any additional photos than the one located in places in time volume one, and it looked pretty much the same one. Couldn't really tell, though, from it, from the quality of the picture. Uh, the following design review guidelines explain the specifics concerning roof sheathing. Uh, a, roof should be retained with original features such as crusting, chimneys, fennels, and cupolas, and if possible, with original roof material such as metal shingles or standing seam metal sheet roofing. R-type profile metal roofing is not permitted. 5V profile metal roofing may be allowed only if the owner establishes that the original roofing was 5V. Um, buildings may be re-roofed with similar substitute materials such as fiberglass, reinforced asphalt shingles, if the original materials are no longer present. No questions for that one. I can move on to the sidewalk. So as stated, the applicant is proposing to pour a concrete sidewalk. Uh, staff found the previous existing sidewalk was concrete. Much of the walkway leading to both the front porch and the back porch and the back door on the west side of the structure was in very poor condition. And this replacement is near a like for like replacement. So there really isn't nothing wrong with that one. And that's all I have. If there's any questions or anything you would like me to clarify, I'm more than happy to. If not, I can step away. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Yep. Have we had this before? All this material? I don't think so. Yeah. I don't remember. I do. <laughs> Mr. McCarthy? Yeah. Yeah, welcome. Thanks, nice job. <laughs> so, Henry McCarthy, uh, the mailing address is actually 855 Sedgefield Street, Durham, North Carolina, which I just drove from, so apologies if you're getting poor data out of me right now. But, uh, <laughs> uh, and this is for 315, obviously, the Jacob Clark House, which we really love and are happy to have taken on. Uh, we do realize, I don't know if anyone's been in there, it needs a, a lot of TLC, as many places do. Uh, but we're just trying to get main things in place to save, you know, the internal parts of the home and um, give it the care it needs. Uh, I also go by Hank, not Henry, because many of you m know my father, so, which is both great and you know, <laughs> dis differentiate. Uh, I, you know, not too much to add. We're obviously open <laughs> for commentary. We tried to source um, steel corrugated roofing that matches the exact, which is a 
kind of been a nightmare for this spe specific type of roof that's currently on the house. That's apparently been there s almost 100 years. We talked to Gate Leonard, I think, who grew up there, and she said it's everyone's it's been there since the dawn of man. But we proposed the, the rippling because it looked like it matched kind of what's currently on uh, the roof. Um, half moons, you know, uh, you guys see this all. <laughs> I mean, they look good. They're hard to work with. There's a mixed bag out on, you know, how much protection they offer the home. So we were going off of what we've used. We live in historic district in Durham, and um, a lot of times they would had suggested using K style because uh, it offers better protection for the home. But you know, that's. So um, I guess just to, to jump right in there, on, on, the, on the roof, what our guidelines are allow are um, true raised seam metal roofs, you know, that have the, the, the seams that go straight up, right, not, right. not the, um, the kind of rounded. And then the area between the raised seams, you, there's, we, our guidelines don't permit styrations. They don't permit the, the rippling effect. Right, it has right. To be and you can see a lot of them in the story. I mean, a lot that we have approved. Um, so, I mean, a, a racing metal roof would be fine, but it would have to be a truly race. It had have to be that profile with with no striations between. So, in you know, the the, the color is not a problem. It's just that it, that that type of metal roof is what our guidelines allow. Right. So we wouldn't be able to to um, approve this type of roof. And it can't be. Um Attached through, through right. the surface. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Uh, the, the fastenings have to be hidden by, yeah, the, by the metal. Clear um, on that. Uh, the one piece on this, though, is back to the corrugated steel roofing. If we are able to source and find almost a like for like. Would that be permissible? The only reason I'm putting that out there is because there is a chance a place in Ohio has this, and you know, cost-wise, it's about the same, uh, or might be about the same as the current. I'm just throwing that out there. I mean, yeah, I don't fine know. either way. We never had that issue come up that I know of. <laughs> yeah. um, so, I mean, what what I mean, our guidelines are designed to help steer us toward approving what would have been appropriate on a house like that when it was first built. Right, That's right. That's what we're trying to do. So, right. you know, I don't, do you have a feel for that, Peyton, when, what, when that type of roofing material was used? And No, I, I don't, but I, I think it's probably been on there quite a long time. Right, it looks like it's been on there a very long time. Yeah. Um, I, I, went, um, I went and looked at it for a while, and I'm surprised that it has been on there for a long time. I mean, it does look like it's, it's old. Yeah, but it looks like a um, an inferior kind of um, agricultural roof. Yeah, it's a patch a patchwork. It's a yeah. It's yeah a I would think. One. So anyway, the the, the point for that was standing seam to go yeah to go standing seam. I was just curious of right. I mean, I, I understand your yeah. desire to try to replicate what's there, but right. since you're putting a new roof on it, it would probably be better to go with a true standing seam roof than to try to replicate right that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Agreed. Okay. There's a lot of, have you ever been in the home? Yes, I have. Yeah, okay. Before. Have you ever been in the bottom, the kind of basement of the home? Yes, I have. Yeah. That's cool. There, there's, the logs are still there from the original yeah. hearth and the blacksmith shop. It's, pretty cool. it's a wonderful place. It's it, it is. Restoring. It is. It's, yeah, thank you for taking we love this it. challenge. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's no, a we're, challenge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so right now it has that, and, and what we, I mean, we, we're supposed to approve, our guidelines allow half round guttering and only allow the K or the OG if it's um, appropriate for the time period of the house or the style of the house, which it would not be for this house. It has half round on it now. What is there a problem with it? It was not installed properly. Oh. <laughs> I don't know how those could, <clears throat> I don't know who put them up or how they went about, but every, everyone who's come by to, you know, it knows these things is like that's, I don't know if they came out after happy hour and <laughs> got up there, but it's, they're just all, I mean, they're, they're not attached properly. The downspouts go into the base, of that, half of them go into the base of uh, that, which he elegantly yeah. stated more than me. Yeah, so it's, I don't know. 
I, it was more, I'm, I mean, I'm sure it's a case if you're wanting to list and sell a home, you, you know. Well, some of them just seem to stop in midair. Yeah, they, well, that is true, yeah. too. Some of them just float in there. But they don't look old. I mean, I'm, I'm just wondering if they could be removed and then added on to. They could, well, what we were told is they just have to be removed and recut. Oh, Everything has oh. to be, yeah. It's well, you know, I mean, what our guidelines would allow us to prove would be the half round and the round down spouts, but right. not the K or the K or style or the rectangular down spout. On, on a house of that age, right, right. here in this district, right. Gotcha. <laughs> and um, so then there's the concrete sidewalk. And that's just going to be a poor concrete sidewalk yeah, to replace a poor concrete sidewalk. Yeah, exactly. And the retaining wall. So right now what you have are poured concrete blocks that resemble stone. Right. And are you going to, I guess the plan is to take that completely down? No, no, I think, I think no, no, that's, oh. that's, oh, okay, this is good. a small retaining wall on the back of the oh, home okay. to prevent, because the, you know, basically the entire back's rotted at like the because the wall up front's beautiful. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. We're not <laughs> okay. anything like that. And I'm sure, I'm sure we'll be back up here in front of you all again and again. Uh, oh, this is just a retaining wall in the back, right, to prevent um, water damage into the back of the house. Which of the two? It looks like there's two different products here. It looks like the one has kind of um, V-shaped indentions at the joints, and this looks no, like... No, it's the standard, yeah, the one you're just pointing to, that That's one. what you would use? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah that would be better. Standard yeah. stone. This, much better. Yeah. So that's just for retain, and how, that's going to be in the back, and... Um, yeah, and it's not over a foot, it's pretty low. Oh, okay, it's, it's, and how far, how long? Not that long, maybe four feet. Oh, okay. Does, is that everything? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I know that's for, really for now. Well, there's the, and the <laughs> sidewalk leading up. Yeah, leading up to that to the steps, which so is. So that's four things. Oh, yep. Okay. All right. So um, I guess with all that being said, would you be okay with with? I mean, what we would be able to prove would be the standing seam with no styrations. Right. Styrations and um, the half round guttering and the round downspouts. Um, and then the other would be, I think. <coughs> yeah, sure. Okay yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. does anyone? I'll, I'll be glad to make the motion. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anybody have a question? Mm -hmm. I just got a statement for him that I don't know if you're aware of our tax abatements. Oh, uh, yeah. It's eligible. Yes, yeah, so we're good. That'll be uh, probably our next yes. one. Oh, work okay. through. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, we, we're getting our feet under us, but uh, really happy to. Good. To and following do it. these guidelines. You know, makes that possible. Yeah, 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 exactly. That's when, when you find the roof that you want to use, can you submit to our staff a sample? Because this has really become a touchy issue for us, and we just do not want to have to. Tell oh, sure, yeah. Who has we, a roof we, half up that it's. No, if we. We have that, yes, definitely. Okay. Uh, no problem. It's the straight steam, no, no bolting or well, anything. The one right, right there on that building across across um, college is is, is, is that exactly? Yeah, we we uh, I'm sure we have that so We have yeah. tons. And the of one it. that's just gone on um, the Mallory House, wherever, wherever you went, Mr. Right. Kinder. <laughs> and your house, that's right. Right. Derek Webb's house. Yeah, and Derek Webb's house, the new one that's going it's up. going up. Yeah. We'll have it. Yeah, sure. All that is correct. Right. Cool. Okay. All right. Is there? I guess it's been moved. Is there a second? Wait a minute. Oh. I haven't made it yet. Oh, I thought <laughs> I thought you were. That was all you were going to give us. So please do. No, it's a complicated. It's a complicated <laughs> motion. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I move to approve. I move to approve the application that includes a true standing seam roof replacement, half round gutters and half and round downspouts, the sidewalk as the applicant has presented and the wall in the back as the applicant has presented. I'll second that. All right, roll call. Mr. Boyd? Aye. Mr. Owens? Aye. Mrs. White? Aye. And Mr. Giesler? Aye. Thanks. Thank you for taking this on. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> very much. It's, it's, it's fun. <laughs> Most days. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next is, um, David Dalton uh, with a certificate of appropriateness for 108 Court Street, uh, the Wing King House.
Yeah, so David Dolan, the applicant slash owner, and Stephen Casey of Casey Construction, representative, has requested approval of certificate of appropriateness for exterior changes, and the property is located at 108 Court Street. Uh, the proposed exterior changes include replacement of existing metal standing seam roof, painted black, with a new 16-inch, 24-gauge metal standing seam roof, painted black, replacement of existing metal half-round gutters, with new 5-inch half-round gutters to be painted either white or black, repaint front entry door to match existing, and repaint front windows and shutters to match existing. Uh, just some background for you. Uh, according to Places of Time, Volume 1, ran by Nancy King, the structure was built in 1803 and is known as the William King House. The William King House was the first brick house built in Abaddon and was known by the King family as Grace Hill. Access to the site will continue to be Court Street and all the adjoining properties are OH on all sides. For staff findings, um, the applicant is proposing to install five inch half round aluminum gutters to be painted white or black and a four inch 24 gauge pre fin kiner steel color round downspout. Currently the structure has metal K style gutters painted white and a round downspout traveling down the structure's face and across the face of 112 and 114 Court Street emptying into Plum Alley. Given the date of the construction it is probably safe to assume the existing K style gutters were installed sometime in the mid 1900s probably around 1940, 1950, somewhere in there. Uh, replacing what was originally metal half round gutters. And I will note that 112 and 114, they're kind of connected to the Summers building as you can see. So I'm assuming when these were put in, these buildings were built next door to the William King house that they kind of came up with a solution where I need to get water away from my house. Let me put my gutter across your building and then it kind of funneled out. So. I'm guessing that the gutter pretty much just went straight down when there was no buildings there at the time for 112 and 114. Uh, for other staff findings, the applicant is proposing to repaint the door, window frame, and window shutters with paint color to match existing. Uh, the existing architectural features are as follows. Front entrance door is painted white, window frames are painted white, and the window shutters are painted a dark green color, as you can see. And then moving to this other part, the applicant is proposing to replace the existing metal standing seam roof painted black with a 16 inch 24 gauge metal standing seam roof with smooth panels painted black. Uh, and that matches pretty much existing what's already there. If there's any questions, comments, you're more than happy to answer. If okay. not, I can move aside. All right, thank you. Okay. Mr. Dalton? Oh. <laughs> Hi, I'm uh, Stephen Casey uh, with Casey Construction. Our mailing address is 11111 Trey North Drive in Cornelius, North Carolina. Um, I think it's pretty straightforward application. We're just replacing like with like and um, refreshing all of the existing paint colors on the front of the building. All right, does anyone have any questions? Comments? I'll do my usual comment <coughs> of um, this is one of our most important structures, contributing structures, um, for many, many reasons. Not only its age, it's one of the very earliest ones, and certainly the earliest brick, but also its history, too. And it's really wonderful that it's being um, taken on as a home again, and, and valued like this, and, and um, taken care of. This, this seems to me to be a very easy application to um, approve, because it seems to be following the guidelines exactly. Okay. Is there a motion to approve? Yeah. Is that a comment? Yes. Or a question is, so is there any intention to change that sort of odd um, downspout configuration? Yeah, so that was, that was one of the things I was going to bring up and ask. Um, currently the downspouts come, I think you have a picture, and Google may have a picture as well. Um, never seen anything like it before, but the downspouts currently come across the um, building next door, the mm -hmm. coffee shop. Um, I doubt the owner's thrilled about that. Um, so I, I would, we can come back and do the exact same thing, replacing like for like. Um, but I think it may end up look better, looking better and working better to bring the downspouts straight down 
um, but I was told that we would need to work with town engineering to get some kind of under sidewalk um, drain access for that. Um, but yeah, currently it transitions from the white gutters to a black downspout that runs across. Um, again, happy to do that if we consider that to be the historic route, but wanted to approach y'all and see what you recommended. Oh, I think if you could go straight down, that would be much preferable. So in that case, we'd have two downspouts, one on the top side of the building and one on the bottom side of the building. I'm um, sure that was just done because the, all the property was owned by one person at well, the time. Well, exactly what uh, Gabe said is that that was a freestanding house and at that time. And then these were built to attach to right. it, really. My guess is it was probably done to keep water off of the sidewalk. And that is a consideration. So I was going to ask Rick. Uh, Assuming you have to go under the sidewalk, is it then acceptable to discharge at the curb? Yes. yes. So once you get it to there, it's, it's cool. What's the procedure for doing that, for getting permission to do that? Uh, for approaching the permit and work with our public works department to the work for the sidewalk and make that work out. We can do that. We'll have to approach them for another encroachment permit or permit anyways when we do the roof work because we'll be over the pedestrian walkway. Um, we already have an encroachment permit for the two parking spots in front, um, but we could probably knock all of that work out together in one encroachment permit. For what's worth, we did almost this exact same thing for the Summers building. Those, uh, those are interior uh, downspouts. That's between you and the bank on Main Street, right? It goes into the curb and gutter system of Main Street. Gotcha. Um, we have a downspout on our 1845 house that goes across the building in order for it not to be going straight down onto a, a surface that, it, that wouldn't take it very well. It's a copper, so it's a sort of, sort of we, we don't even see it anymore, but it is so that it empties out in a better place. But so what you were seeing that, Rick? Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> so what you would be doing is just coming straight down, going under the sidewalk and out yeah, of the street. We'd bring two downspouts down, right. one on the uphill side and the downhill side. Yeah, of course um, that would be that would be preferable yes. if, if, if it worked. It can happen. Yeah. Okay. And then what color? Because right now we have a mix of colors. Well, so you're. We have the application for white or black um, guttering and downspouts. Hey, do you have black because the roof is black? Oh, we have black because the existing downspout's black. Oh, okay. But the, <clears throat> but the guttering across the front is white. I have it in the application as white or black. I was going to see which y'all recommended or preferred. Well, I can you, do either. It doesn't. Well, you've got the white cornice that the guttering attaches to, right? I do. And then you, the downspouts are kind of black to kind of disappear. Yes, yeah, because see. they go across the brick. Yeah, yeah. see the transition there on yeah. the corner. Yeah, I'm happy to do it either way. Once we get a new black roof in, that black gutter may disappear a little bit more, being black on black. Um, but I, I applied with both colors so that we could. I mean, we, we, we can approve either one. That's not. Right. That's, those are both permissible. It's just a homeowners. matter of whatever you all want to do. Maybe which, whichever the homeowner wants to do. Yeah, we, we. Do you have a preference? Both are fine. I mean, we can improve both. And you, <laughs> what do you say? Well, you can, can hold we decide one? later. You can, yeah, I was yeah say, you can decide you can later. Decide, hold one up and then hold up another and see which one looks better. Yeah. Okay. We can we'll probably both. end up doing that then yeah. and bringing both of them down and then we'll work with the town to get them up underneath the sidewalk. Yeah. Yeah, I would think the least desirable would be the downspout to be white, because <clears throat> that's really going to stand, stand out. out. I mean, that's obviously the one that's going to show the most. So I think black on that and on the other, on the gutter, I'm not sure. I mean, the the white looks nice with the white corners. It does. But 
something but with a black roof it would coordinate well with that so all right any other comments or questions not is there a motion I'll make a motion to approve the application as presented. Is there a second? Second. Okay, roll call. Mr. Boyd? Aye. Mr. Owens? Aye. Mrs. White? Aye. And Mr. Giesler? Aye. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Uh, next is public comments. Do we have any public comments? All right. Um, any, uh, we don't have a uh, discussion. <laughs> Business matters not on the agenda. Um, we've got several items there. The first is 212 West Valley Street, retaining wall color. So I'm just gonna okay. Yeah, bring you up to speed on. So Mr. Smith uh, called me and said, uh, they've done it the stucco color, how you guys approved before. But after looking at it, because the house trim and everything's white, he's wondering, wondering if white would be a better match. So he was just wondering what was the board's feeling this is on the that. picture we're looking at. Yeah. So he's painted it the stucco color that you've approved. Right. But now looking at the house, it seems he's like maybe it matches better if it's a, it's a white color. So he was just wondering what was the board's feeling on that on those regards. It's hard to tell from this picture because even the clouds look yellow. So <laughs> I'm not sure how much of the. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Maybe we could, could we take a look at it and then get back to him. Yeah, I can let him know. Yeah, he was just kind of willing to do whatever you guys wanted to do. He could keep it the same, or he could paint it white. So I how can let him know that they'll be coming. You guys will be coming by and. How quickly does he need an answer? He didn't seem too rushed with it, okay. so and I can kind of get that out of him. And I can email all of you after and see what he, if he has a specific date in mind. So if not, I can just say they'll be by just to see it for themselves and. They oh, can you can tell better in the picture here. Is see. there what is this it's, white up here? That's much better. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Can, so we can see it up there now. So he wants to change it to white, maybe. He was thinking about white because it might look better with the house since all the white, all the trim is white. And the fence above it is And the white. fence above it is white, as opposed to a stucco color retaining wall. So he was just kind of seeing what you guys were feeling about that. But he's willing to do either one still. Yeah, I don't think it makes any difference. I think it's fine. I think I, I would nope. approve the white like, like he would like yeah. to do. Yeah. Is there a second? Yes. Second. All right. Roll call. Mm -hmm. Mr. Boyd? And aye. Mr. Owens? Aye. Mrs. White? Aye. And Mr. Geisler? Aye. Okay, and then the next is uh, 228 West Valley Street, um, I guess an extension for the certificate of approval, appropriateness. Looks like somebody has one expiring. Yeah. Is that right? I don't know that we need to. Yeah, oh, you just yeah, put that. They're just that, and the waiver's just in the packet. Oh, for and then you. we don't do any. Is it we need to do? So it? we don't need to do. No. That. no. Okay. No, that was the only the first one we made. You, know, you had to really look at the other one. Just yeah. Okay. All right. I have an item. All right. Um, I had a call from Bass Alloy, and. Um, She was asking about painting, changing the trim color on the front of the house. You know which house I'm talking about. Everybody? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Marshall Folks' old house. Oh, yeah. Across from the church. Yeah. <coughs> um, and I told her I'd change in the paint color and need an approval, but then I went by on the way to the meeting and I was reminded that new windows have been installed in, in the addition the back of the house. And um, she had mentioned a sort of tan, I think she called it tan or beige, but she wanted to paint the trim. And I, th I would think that the color that's on the windows, which is a pre-finished paint color, would look fine on the front. And if that's okay with them, I guess my question is, can that be handled as a 
as a wafer. As a wafer, staff thing. If it's the same, if it's color that's already been approved for the house. It's been approved in the back oh, of the house. On the rear. Uh -huh. Yeah. I would think so. I would think so. Okay. Wouldn't you? Yeah. I would yeah. think so. Because that way we could, because I'd said uh, otherwise I would try to get, <laughs> see if we could yeah. have a, a call meetings so they don't have to wait a month because they have painters standing there with their brushes out. So. Right. So do. You, do you know which house that is? I was going to say, could you give me an address possibly? It's, um... Well, let's see, my house is 133, and so the next house would be 135? Okay. 136? Uh, maybe? Give me just an idea. 30, 137? Yeah. Okay, probably 136. It's, it's a recent project of, of the board at the board. Okay. okay. And it's, it's directly across from the Episcopal Church. Okay. It's ongoing. It has a lot of work going yeah, on. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. That. Okay. I'll so you're so you're just wanting to the color that was approved for the back you want on the front as well. Yeah. As a waiver. Yeah. Okay. And it's almost the same color as the okay. front already. Okay. All right. I have. I have. Yeah, that, I, I, that's all. I have, I have another thing for us just to consider before you read that. Okay. That's a nice closer. All right. And I don't know that this I don't know that this is anything anybody's even interested in, and I'm unsure about it. But I'd like. Or I'd like for you all to think about it with me. Have you noticed that I've had supports built under my window boxes? Mm -hmm. The window boxes on the front, um, they have to be attached. Um, and so when they are attached, I was noticing just at the beginning of it what looks like maybe a stress point on the windowsill. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, I'm either going to have to support these or not have window boxes. So I've had these frames built that slightly reference the, um, tr the, the fan light of the window above, but I would appreciate um, just looking at them and your general comments. I don't mind removing them, but um, it's, I'm just trying to protect the building, of course, and it looks like to me if I want to have window boxes, I've got to have something to support them. They're, they're not permanent. Nothing's permanent or a change, but I appreciate your comments just over the next <coughs> while they're an experiment, I guess, is what I'm saying. All right. Thank you. All right, and I have one matter. We received a very nice um, note from uh, Mr. Rick Humphreys that yeah. says, uh, <laughs> Dear uh, board members, thank uh, each and every member of the HPRB for their work in bringing about the recent preservation event held on August 18, 2022, just wow. Uh, exclamation point, exclamation point. What an interesting, informative, and fun Avenue Historic Preservation Day. Every lecture, talk, walk about, and information presented was wonderful. Thank you. I'm in hopes of this becoming a semi-annual event, maybe next time addressing federal and state tax credits. I know that the feedback I have heard from others, other attendees has been nothing but positive and hoping for continued preservation events. In your service, I am Rick Humphreys. So thank you very thank much you, for <laughs> letting us know that. Um, is there any other business? I did contact Mike Pulis and he said he could come on our, to our October meeting if we would like him to. He's our DHR representative okay. and <clears throat> he could just kind of guide us a little bit further on some of the things that we heard at the um, at the event and um, specifically about our nomination and the expansion of the district and those types of things. Yeah, apparently we need to update our nomination and um, I guess amend our nomination to include the extra areas mm -hmm. that were found to be contributing structures when we did the survey. And apparently um, we'll we're probably eligible for grant money as a, what are we? A CLG. CLG to have someone actually help us with that. And he's going to come and make a presentation to us about that issue. Is that correct? Correct. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. All right. Anything further? Yes. Uh, just one little thing. Uh, is this at um, Preservation Virginia, uh, up in by Mike Lasco, an environmentalist, Mike Lasco. Uh, President of Virginia, like Jamestown, Scotch, Scotch Town, uh, Bacon's Castle, all the, you know, those several uh, Virginia State landmarks, um, they are in the process of doing an article.
article uh, on Abby and the, the preservation efforts in Abby. Um, uh, Byron and myself, a few other people that have, have uh, uh, shoveled a little bit of money into trying to, to do these uh, 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 buildings and houses. Uh, eight were at the tavern and had dinner down there and, and did a walkabout. Uh, and Byron was most gracious by opening his house up for us. But what I'm wanting to do, I'm getting long, I'm kind of a long way around. I'm taking pictures or photographs right now, images to send to them. They're wanting to do an article either this fall or this spring in their newsletter. And so um, uh, I would like to have a, a photograph tonight of the HPRB along with my aunt and along with Gabe. Uh, and if y'all would consent to that, and then that photograph's going to go because you all are an essential part of keeping the historic preservation, or the historic preservation alive in Abingdon and trying to do it the right way. Yeah. Okay. And then one more. <laughs> so, when the when the young lady from um, uh, DHR was talking to us about uh, historic districts and the uh, and the, um, the framing of historic districts, they were talking about moving the time frame up. Uh, looking at you, know, they were saying like before it was prior to 1950. Now they're looking at possibly even prior up to 1970 and back. So what that did is that made some uh, uh, houses that were prior kind of uh, non-contributing structures as a contributing structure as part of the maturity of the district. And so that is, is, is something I think is we, you all move forward and we need to be sure to look at that to say, well, we had these 1950s so-and-so house or 60s that the time wasn't that, we didn't think it was that historic, but now because of the maturity of what's been there, you know, it's very uh, it's very indicative of, and, you know, pardon, my, pardon me for using this word, ranch style house or you know a house that now now has, has become in, uh, embedded you know in that historic district so uh, that that and then the, once again the pushing for the park street district uh park street was one of these very was the second street main street was the first street park street was the second street was known as water street at the time and so it's the second oldest street in, uh, in the in the uh, uh, historic district part of it but it needs to be expanded to, to be able to include all of it including really protecting the avenue water source, what was called water, which was a spring down on the east end of Park Street. That's it. That's all. <laughs> all right. So we're to meet with you right after. What now? We're to meet with you right after. You can just stand and stay right there. And if I can get Gabe to go up, I'll take you. I'll take other photos right there because the, the emblem is really very oh. Okay. You want to adjourn, adjourn first? All right. Do we have a motion to adjourn? <laughs> motion. He's running. Okay. Is there a second? Um, a second. Um, all the uh, roll call. Uh, Mr. Boyd. Sorry. What do we do? Uh, Adjourning. Aye. Uh, yeah. right. Mr. Owens. Aye. Right. Mrs. White. Aye. Right. And Mr. Giesland. Aye. Uh,